Well, that was a... Uh, Secretary General, and the reason he came here today 
is to show uh, support and solidarity to the Somali people uh, for this time of uh, humanitarian crisis, uh, which we have a drought, and that may result and may produce a famine uh, if we don't receive any rain in the coming two months. Uh, this could be uh, a humanitarian crisis, which probably um, the same as the one we have had in 2011, which we lost um, 260,000 people. So I'm very happy to see him here and uh, to amplify the magnitude and the crisis of drought which may uh, result to a famine. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, he's uh, also uh, appealing to the international community how to prevent a famine to occur or to happen in this, uh, in this, in, in this country. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the media, thank you very much for your presence. I decided that I would make in Baidoa the first visit of my tenure as Secretary General of the United Nations. And the reason why I came to Mogadishu and Baidoa is very simple, to express my deep solidarity with the Somali people in this moment that it is at the same time both tragic and hopeful. And it is exactly because it is tragic and because it is hopeful that it makes sense to make a very strong appeal to the international community to fully support Somalia at the present moment. Last week, in New York, I had the opportunity to appeal for massive support of the international community in order to avoid a tragic development of famine in four countries in the world. In South Sudan, in northeastern Nigeria, in Yemen, and in Somalia. There is a chance to avoid the worst. There is a chance to avoid in Somalia a situation similar like the one we had in 2011. There is an excellent cooperation between the president, the government, and the humanitarian community, the UN family, the NGO movements, the Red Cross of Crescent. There is a plan of action. There is capacity on the ground. But we need massive support from the international community to avoid the repetition of the tragic events of 2011. And I remember being in Dolowado and seeing Somalis come in terrible, terrible situations and suffering uh, in a way that is absolutely unacceptable in the modern way. But today, we have 6.2 million people in need of humanitarian assistance in Somalia. That's almost half of the Somali population. We have 333,000 children that are acutely malnourished and the risk to go up to 1 million if there is not enough support to avoid it. We have 3.3 million people in need of health support to avoid the impact of diseases and to uh, avoid the circumstances in which it is so easy to lose one's life because of lack of health assistance. Cholera has been developing, uh, making hunger even worse, even more dangerous. In the last two months, we had 7,731 cases of cholera with 183 people dying. Just last week, 1,352 cases of cholera, 38 people dying. It's a process in acceleration. All these reasons justify a massive response. We have things prepared on the ground, but we need financial support from the international community. And that is why we are appealing for $825 million for the support to 5.5 million people in six months. And without that support, 
we will have a tragedy that is absolutely unacceptable and that the Somali people does not deserve. But this is also a moment of hope. It's a moment of hope because Somalia is turning the page. A new president was elected. A new prime minister was appointed. There is a very strong commitment to enhance security and at the same time to enhance the capacity of the government to start to provide effective services to the population, requiring for that, of course, the solidarity of the international community. We have army some forces doing a job that uh, the world should be grateful to because they are protecting not only Somalis, they are protecting us all against terrorism. AMISOM has not been effectively helped by the international community. It's important to better support AMISOM. But it is also important to support the government to create a true national Somali army and a true national Somali police because only them can fully be able to protect the country in relation to terrorism. Only them can create the conditions for Somali to be able to avoid in the future the kind of tragedy that Somalia is facing today. This is a moment of tragedy. People are dying because of famine, because of disease. But this is a moment of hope because the government is ready to act, because the humanitarian community is ready to act. They are cooperating and with the support of the international community it will be possible to avoid the worst and to, it will be possible to launch the pillars, to launch the fundamental basis for Somalia to be able to turn the page and for Somalia to find, finally, the way for stability, the way for peace and the way for the prosperity that Somalis have always been able to manage by themselves to obtain. There is no other people in the world with more entrepreneurship capacity, with more initiative capacity than the Somali people. Let's try to help the Somali people come together and build a Somali state of peace and prosperity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the President and the Secretary General have kindly agreed to take a few questions. Unfortunately, there won't be time for too many. But if you'd like to ask a question, please can you raise your hand identify yourself. The first hand going up was the lady in orange. Can you identify yourself and address your question to one of them, please? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, this is the biggest priority. Is it trying to keep people alive or is it trying to keep the government together and explain why? And then for the Secretary General, you have talked before about not wanting to have to go to the international community with images only to persuade particularly the richest countries and the biggest companies around the world to actually open their wallets at this time. Thank you. Well, uh, my uh, first priority is to uh, address this uh, drought crisis. We definitely may produce a famine um, in, in the coming months. Uh, we know that many animals have uh, died and of course people will follow. Um, my main priority is to make appeal to the international community to help us uh, with this crisis. And uh, that's why uh, we have uh, the uh, Secretary General to be here today in our support. And of course we need the international community to do the same. That's my first priority. The second priority is to address the security situation which we have had for the last 10 years, which is the Al-Shabaab and the terrorist organizations who affiliate with Al-Qaeda and ISIS as well. Uh, they have been um, um, impediment to the stability of Somalia and we have to deal with them. We have to deal with them by we're organizing and we're building Somali National Army. Of course, we really appreciate the, um, the AMISOM um, uh, help and what they have done for us over the years by protecting um, uh, the city uh, or the government from al Shabaab. But they cannot do it alone and uh, we have to do it um, for ourselves by uh, reorganizing and rebuilding Somali Army 
so they can effectively challenge and fight against Al Shabaab. I am not appealing for the generosity of the rich. I'm appealing for the enlightened self-interest of the rich. We live in a world with a multiplication of conflicts. Somalia is one of them. Conflicts are interrelated, and they are related to a threat of global terrorism. There is not only terrorism in Somalia or in the neighborhood of Somalia. There are terrorist attacks in Paris. There are terrorist attacks uh, in uh, other European cities, in North American cities. Uh, and if we want to fight terrorism, we need to address the root cause of terrorism and we need to bring peace and stability to countries like Somalia. And to address in an effective way the risk of famine is to support the stabilization of Somalia. It's the best way to address root causes of terrorism. It's the best way for rich countries to protect themselves. So we are not appealing to generosity. We are appealing to people to be intelligent enough to understand that to let countries like Somalia perish and to let the people, like the Somali people, suffer the dramatic impact of the combination of drought, conflict and disease is a danger for everybody. community, uh, there is a large Somali community in the United States, contribute to the U.S. economy and the U.S. society in different ways, and uh, we have to talk about the what the Somali people have contributed, rather than only few people who, who probably may cause a problem. And that's why the root cause is how to uh, defeat Al Shabaab here, and that's why uh, one of my main priority is to. Okay, we running out of time. This gentleman here, please. Uh, but unfortunately, we got to got to move on after that. Uh, just a question for the president and the secretary general. For the, the president, thank you for having Could us. You, uh, introduce yourself. Sorry, my name is David McKenzie with CNN Television. Uh, Mr. President, you received a Make Somalia Great Again hat from the ambassador. Is something like the travel ban a way to make Somalia great? Well, uh, basically that was a good gift from the ambassador, meaning that to show solidarity, to see that Somalia to come back again as a great country, as a good country, um, that uh, uh, at peace with itself and with its neighbors, and um, of course, that's a uh, that's good term to see, to, to say that uh, Somalia should, should come back. But is this travel ban a way to make that relationship stronger or does it weaken the self-interest of rich nations? What needs to be done right now 
to avoid a catastrophe in the Horn of Africa and elsewhere. First of all, addressing the needs of food security of populations that are dying of hunger. We need to combine build resilience of the populations to avoid the repetition of these crises year after year after year, not forgetting that climate change is becoming an accelerator of this crisis, namely of drought, that is happening more and more frequently and with more and more devastating consequences around the world. And at the same time, the capacity in order to ensure their own security, build their own armies, build their own police forces, support them, build their own institutions, in order to be able to fight. Thank okay, thank you all very much. Just the ceremony handshake. No. We are going to have a briefing now.